I'm Shannon Weber with Hive, a hub of positive sexual and reproductive health, and I'm here with I'm Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I'm the medical director of the Infectious Disease Clinic at United Medical Center. And we're here at Women's Research Institute, and it's March 2015, just to give a time and place. How long have you been practicing um, medicine? Wow, I've been practicing medicine since 1995, so 20 years this year. Amazing. Yeah. And when did you start working with people who have HIV? Probably around then, around 1995. I started uh, during my training, mm -hmm. treating people with HIV, and then as an infectious disease provider, HIV is just part of what we do now mm -hmm. because it is an infectious disease. So. We, um, we see people with HIV almost every day. Mm. So what are some of the common misconceptions that people have about HIV transmission? So by that I mean how HIV is passed from one person to another. Mm -hmm. This is a great question. People ask me this all mm -hmm. the time, especially when I'm engaged in community conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, people are confused about how HIV is transmitted, so I'm glad you're asking the question. It's important to know HIV is not transmitted through mosquitoes, mm -hmm. so you can't get a mosquito bite and get HIV. It is not transmitted by drinking out of the same glasses mm -hmm. or eating off the same uh, you with the same utensils or off the same plates. Mm -hmm. You cannot get HIV from a toilet seat. Mm -hmm. You get HIV through bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. So vaginal fluid mm -hmm. or fluids from the vagina. Mm -hmm. Uh, semen, mm -hmm. blood, mm -hmm. and women who are breastfeeding, if they are HIV positive and not on treatment, they may transmit HIV to their baby through breast milk, but we don't so see that very often, fluids. but it's bodily fluid, so semen, blood, vaginal fluid. And what about saliva? Saliva, this is a common um, confusion also. Mm -hmm. HIV is not transmitted through saliva unless there's blood in it. Mm. People get confused by that because the rapid test is mm. often um, how we detect whether or not people have HIV right. and it's a mouth swab. And so people have asked me, well, I got the, the mouth swab to check for HIV, so why isn't HIV in saliva? Like, yeah. Why can't you get it from, from kissing? Mm -hmm. And that's because the actual virus is not in saliva. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is the body's response to the virus. That's what shows up in saliva, in and it's called antibodies. Mm -hmm. So that test is not looking for actual virus. So common ways that you can acquire or get HIV from someone is through vaginal or anal sex mm -hmm. and sharing needles. Right. So I want to ask you then about more about sex and how if I'm HIV negative and I'm dating someone who's HIV positive, mm -hmm. how is it that I can protect myself from getting HIV? Yeah, this is a great question. So the traditional ways are really important. Um, using condoms. Mm -hmm. and what about that female condom? The female condom is something I think that people should try and see if it works for them. I, I heard that from one of my friends, but it's been... It's not on our radar. Yeah, well, I have to be honest. A lot of my patients have tried it, and mm -hmm. they actually don't like it, and there are some that do. So I think women should try it. But it's mm -hmm. it's nice to have an option for mm -hmm. women to control when the condom goes in and, mm -hmm. and not have to rely on their male partner. Uh, but in addition to condoms, if you have a partner who's HIV positive, the best thing you can do is ensure that he is on treatment Mm -hmm. And that he is, he is, his, his virus is responding to the treatment, or he's what we call undetectable. That means he's still HIV positive, but the virus is not showing up in his bloodstream. And that's just because the medicines mm -hmm. have effectively shut the HIV factory down. Mm -hmm. So if it's not able to produce virus, it's not showing up in the blood or in his semen which puts her at, or a woman at very low risk of being infected. So. And so how do you find that out? How would someone know how much virus is in someone's body? I really encourage couples to communicate. Mm -hmm. So if a woman knows that her partner is HIV positive, they need to have regular conversations and hopefully she can be part of his care because he can get a blood test to tell whether or not his body is responding to the medications. So questions that she should ask him are things like, are you on medication? Mm -hmm. And 
when was the last time you you had your blood drawn to see if the medication is working and asking him specifically about his numbers because some of the blood tests give us information about how well the body is doing and mm -hmm. how, how well the medications are working mm -hmm. so I heard you saying that if someone has HIV and they're taking their medications and they don't have any virus in their body and they get tested for that they have a very low chance of passing HIV onto someone Absolutely. during sex. Right. There, there's been research that shows that if a person is undetectable, there's that word again, the virus is not showing up in the bloodstream, mm -hmm. they have a 96% less likely chance of getting mm. the virus. So that's, that's really great news and it's something that we've been mm -hmm. uh, excited about for the last several years. So we really encourage people as a prevention strategy mm -hmm. to have their partners take medication because they can control the virus and prevent transmission to their partners. So it's not only good for the person's own health but also for their partner. Absolutely. Now yeah. some women wonder, so th some HIV negative women with positive male partners wonder if they have herpes, does this increase their risk of getting HIV from their partner mm -hmm. and how do you deal with that and talk about it? Yeah. Talking about it is really critical, and this is difficult for people with sexually transmitted diseases like herpes, mm -hmm. including HIV. Um, but we do know that if you have herpes you and you are exposed to HIV, if you're having an active outbreak, you're probably more likely to get HIV than someone who doesn't have herpes. Mm. However, as we just talked about, if the partner is on HIV treatment, and is mm -hmm. undetectable or the virus is not floating around in the bloodstream, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter if she has herpes or not because the virus is controlled. Wow. Yeah. So we talked about male condoms, female condoms, um, and we talked about how important an undetectable viral load is. Are there other options for some, an HIV negative person who mm -hmm. wants to protect themselves from acquiring HIV? Sure, one of the, the latest strategies we're talking about is a medication called Truvada, mm -hmm. and we refer to this as PrEP, which stands for Pre-Exposure Prophylaxis. Now, that's a lot of words, but really it means that this pill can protect you from getting HIV from your partner. Mm. If, there's a big if, if you take the medication every day. So you have to be very regular with the mm. medication in order for it to remain in your body to protect you from getting HIV. So the person would need to talk with their doctor about that? Absolutely. But I think PrEP is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So patients and their partners need to talk. This needs to be a conversation, mm -hmm. uh, an open conversation about whether or not PrEP is right for you. Mm -hmm. Because if the partner is undetectable and on treatment, there may not be a reason to also be on PrEP. I'm so really hearing how important that undetectable viral load Absolutely. is, how valuable it is. Absolutely. Not everyone knows that. To me, that is the single most important thing we can do to prevent the spread of HIV, is to get people who are HIV positive on treatment consistently so that their virus is completely controlled. Awesome. It's such good news. Yeah, it's great news. Thank you so much for doing this. Sure. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.